We begin the service today with sing number 77, The Eastern Gate. got that opportunity to all meet over there. We've all met out here today. We've exercised the opportunity that we put forth the effort to come out and to fellowship one with the other. But I hope most of all that we've come out to learn more about what Jesus Christ would have for us to do in our life, how he would want us to live our life and what he had want for us to do with the things that he's entrusted into our hands. By filling us with his spirit and by filling us with his knowledge and understanding, we've all got that opportunity this morning if we will just put it into his hands. And we'll get Satan out of our mind. We'll get the carnal things out of our mind. And we'll put 
the things eternal in our mind. When we stop and we think about this life and at everything that pertains to it, the things that we can see, the things that we have in our homes, the things that we put lots of priority on will soon be gone. There's nothing here but what is temporary. Everything that we see and everything that we can touch and everything that we have here in this world is temporary and will soon be gone. But there's one thing that is eternal, and that's our mortal soul, our immortal soul that is right here within this body. That soul will live forever. It will be in some condition forever. We have the opportunity today that that soul can have eternal life. It can be quickened. It can be given life from the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And then we can have that. We can maintain it. We can keep it throughout eternity. As long as we want it, the Lord says, I will be with you. If we will just put it into his hands and if we will allow him to direct our thoughts and our words and our deeds he's promised all these things to us it's in this book do we want to live by it do we want eternal life do we truly want that are we willing to give it all up for him whatever he asks for are we willing to do that Are we willing to lay aside the things that we may treasure greatly here upon the earth that we might win Christ? And when we read through this book and we see how others have lived and we see what a wonderful opportunity we have and we see how blessed that we have been here upon the earth naturally and how blessed we've been spiritually with the opportunity to know him. And I know that there's people here, there's some that have, that they know him and they're walking with him today. There's people that haven't. And there's people that's not walking in that today. He says that we not only have to talk to things, but we've got to walk in that spirit. Are we truly desiring that above all things? Are we truly walking in his spirit today? Let us all put it into his hands and let's be begging him that he is with us this morning and that he will give us words of life, eternal life, that we can walk with him and we can be at one with him, friends. If we're not at one with him and with his people and with his church, there's something bad wrong, something eternally wrong, and it's not with him. He says he and his father are one. And he says, I will send to you the comforter. I'll send to you the spirit of the Holy Ghost so that then you can be a son of God and that you can be at one with him. Is that the case with us all this morning? Take it to the Lord and let him be the one that gives you the understanding in all things that he has to say. turn to Timothy this morning. This is 1st Timothy. We'll start here at the 4th chapter of Timothy. These are short chapters. But there's a lot in them. And understanding that Paul wrote these things to his son, he said, the young man that he had mentored, 
one that he worked very closely with, and one that had traveled with Paul, one that had seen the trials and temptations and tribulations that Paul had gone through, and things that I'm sure that he went through also. And starting at that first verse of the fourth chapter of Timothy, he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I believe we talked about some of these words last Sunday here of, this, of these things, and we could get into that kind of a condition. But I want you to think about what Paul was saying. What he was encouraging this young man to was to be careful and to not let things of this world take you away, to not let other doctrines, things that does not line up with this work, with the gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what Paul was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says, if there's any other gospel, doesn't matter where it comes from, he says, you better reject it. He says, it is coming from Satan. And I want you to listen. He says, now, the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost is who is speaking this. And I believe it is a warning to us just as much today as it was in that day. That in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, not following the truth, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. What's the last part of that? How can we understand what is hypocrisy? What can, how can we understand what is lies? How can we understand what the doctrine of devils is? Those who have received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And how can we do that? Receiving the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. By going to the door, Jesus Christ. He says, I'm the door. I am the only way. But then he can give to us that eternal life through that Spirit. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. There was many, many things under the law that they were commanded that they could not eat. But remember how that God took all that away when he, he sent that down to Peter and he told him. And this was a parable, but he says, Now what I have cleansed, call not thou unclean. And it was not the food. Paul makes it very plain and clear that it's not what comes into your mouth that defiles you spiritually. He says that's not at all the case. He says, but it's what comes out of that heart, what comes out of that mind, that soul, that heart. He says that's what will defile you and it will defile you spiritually and it will destroy you. But the things that we take in, the food, whatever it might be, he says, you just take that with thanksgiving. Thankful that God has given you those things that you might be able to use them to the benefit of this natural body. But be careful what comes out of it, he says. First of all, we can let things come into our mind, not going into our mouth and into our stomach and on through, as he says. But that that comes into our mind, we can control that, and that can defile us. Don't let things of this world be careful what you put in that mind. It can be destroyed if we aren't careful with that. 
But what comes out of that can destroy us. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. What had, you, what had he obtained to? He had obtained to the spirit of the Holy Ghost. How? Now listen. He says here, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a minister, a good minister of Jesus Christ. And that is my job today, to put these things so that you have them in your treasure and you can remember what the Lord has commanded, how he has commanded for us to live. He says, now nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. Now, first of all, we've got to have that faith. That's how we're able to receive of that good doctrine. Having faith in Jesus Christ that he's the son of God and that he came here to save the world. And he will save all of those that come to him. Of good doctrine, then we learn and we understand what his doctrine is. And we're able to live by that, that good doctrine. Not the doctrine of Satan, not the things of this world, but of the good doctrine of the truth that he spoke about that we just read of with that he that received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth, that truth is the good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. obtained. Now have you attained that today? Is that fully in your, in your inward man? Are you able... To let that spirit then direct you in a work that he's talking about here. But refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. It says refuse things of man and you can go out and you can read through history and see how that so many religions, different denominations and things... And I believe that these are some of the things that he was talking about. He was talking about their profane and old wives' fables. But let's just take it a little further in our day of what has gone all the way along. That we need to, to refuse the doctrines of false religions. And exercise thyself unto godliness. Exercise ourselves. What he's saying there is put ourselves into it. Work in that work. Work in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Unto godliness. For bodily exercise, he says, profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. I want you to think about that a little bit. And I want you to think about what he says, bodily exercise profiteth little. And I know that there are certain things that we can do there that can help to keep this body naturally in better shape. And be able to live a better life. But I believe he's talking about there the spiritual things. But I want you to stop and think a little bit about that today. And if we just look around and throughout our community, throughout our friends, throughout the people that's here maybe even. If we're not careful, we can put more emphasis on that type thing than, they will, than we will. The spiritual part. Do you want to get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and say, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to sit down for the next hour or two and, and communicate with the Lord. Instead of going out with and that bodily exercise. I'm not telling you that 
That is just something that you should not do at all, but I'm telling you that if we're not careful, we will put way more emphasis on something like that than we will wanting to know more and getting a closer walk with our Lord and Savior. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Which do you feel like is important? Growing closer to him? Having that godliness within you and learning about that. He says that's profitable unto all things. That will help us even in our natural life. That will even help us to show how we need to take care of this body. Having promise of the life that now is. The promise that we are able to live here upon the earth. And to have knowledge and understanding of how and what we need to do to survive naturally and spiritually. And that which is to come, that life, that is where it will be profitable, the most profitable for us all is living in that godliness. It's what can I do to draw closer to him? This is a faithful saying. And worthy of all acceptation. I want to say, these things sometimes they, they really get my attention. And he says, This is a faithful saying. What he's saying is, This is a true saying. He says, This is the word of God, is what he's really saying. This is the word that Jesus Christ. From God the Father has given to me. It's a faithful saying. And it's worthy for every one of us to accept it. And to believe it. Is that the case with us friends? We've been talked about a lot here recently. About this exact thing of accepting the truth. This is what he talked about as we just read again a few minutes. Which believe and know the truth. This is that acceptable doctrine that he's talking about. And have we truly accepted it? Are we truly accepting it today? Are you at one with his work? For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. For whatever, for those things, for the truths. And walking with him, he says, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. This is just what Paul was telling the man approximately almost 2,000 years ago, how to go out and to teach and to preach and to command the Word of God. And are we willing to accept it today? Are we willing to believe that these words are just as strong for us? Or are we too much as the world, and this is, this is not, this is things that's old-fashioned. We don't have to live in that manner today. But we do. This is what he was telling us how we should live. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You know, what does that sound like? As I'm reading that, it, it just comes to my mind that it sounds like as believers. Be careful where you go. Be careful what you say. Be careful how you dress. Be careful in everything. That's what he was saying here. 
Let no man despise thy youth. First of all, this was a young man, and I believe that he was walking in the truth. And I believe I know that Paul understood that. Paul wanted to encourage him. I want to encourage each one of you young people. But let's walk according to the way this young man was. And listen to what Paul was telling him. He says, be thou an example to the believers. Have we heard that recently? About how we, need, we are setting forth an example, every one of us from the oldest year all the way to the youngest. We are setting an example in how we live. And that's what Paul was telling this man. But be thou an example of the believers. Is your life showing that you are a believer of Jesus Christ? And you are following that in every aspect of your life. He says in word, in what you say, in conversation, in charity, in the love that you have for one another, in the love that you have for God the Father and His Son. In spirit, are you walking in the spirit of the Holy Ghost or the spirit of Satan? The spirit of the Holy Ghost or the spirit of the world? In faith. Impurity. Now what does that purity mean? Do you think that I can walk in purity and then go out here and live as the world and lying and stealing and murder and fornication and adultery and all these type things that people are committing throughout the world today and they say, well, I prayed a prayer and I'm saved. But Paul says here that this is how we that let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example and live in this manner. And friends, that's what the Lord has been talking to us about for a long time, that we need to be living in this same manner. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Till I come. Paul was maybe hoping to come back to be able to be in, in, in this man's presence. But what I'm going to use that for, and I will say today, let's let that be coming from Jesus Christ. And let that be his word. Till I come, till I come back here, I've just told you how you need to live. Give attendance to reading. Attendance to reading this work. Now, I believe that Timothy had certain things that Paul wanted him to read, maybe letters, different things that Paul had written, and other things maybe others had written down about the, the work of Jesus Christ while he was here. He says, now give attendance to that, to exhortation and to doctrine. Learn what the doctrine and the gospel of Jesus Christ is and know it. Know it in your heart. So that you are able to do the things and set forth an example that a believer should set forth. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. He says, neglect not the gift, neglect not that spirit of the Holy Ghost. Now think about that. If we neglect our body, if we neglect taking care of it or neglect taking care of our clothes or whatever, they will become shabby. They will, the body will get to, if we neglect to feed it and to give it drink, it will become weak and eventually it will die if we don't do something about it. If we don't keep up with that and not be neglecting our responsibilities toward this body. But Paul's talking about that spiritual gift. He says, now, that spiritual gift, that gift of God, that free gift that has been given to you, Timothy. He says, neglect it not, but to be strong and to use that, to keep it strong by doing the things that are just said by reading and exhortations, thinking Receiving the exhortations from God the Father and receive that doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, 
which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. What is in our minds when we get up? When you awake during the night, you awake first thing in the morning, what is on your mind? Do you ever think about that? Immediately, what's the first thing that comes into your mind when you awake at night? He's telling him to meditate on these things. What more can we do than to have our minds engaged in the spiritual part? Meditate on it. Now he says, give thyself wholly unto them. Give thyself wholly unto them. What does that mean? It means to put it all in, as we talked about in the very beginning of this service. To be reconciled to whatever the Lord brings to us and be ready then to put it all in your life, whatever it might be. And there's lots of things that we can do in our daily walk that we can be wholly committed to walking with Him. Give thyself wholly to them, to the works, to the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and to the works that he would have for us to do, that thy profiting may appear to all. And I believe he's talking about that spiritual profiting first. But I believe even also that if we're walking close with him, and if we're in everything we're doing, our lives will be, our natural lives will be profitable enough for us to maintain whatever he asks for us and however he asks for us to live. We'll have a, I'm not saying that we may just be rich, wealthy people, but I think, I know that we'll have all that we need if we will walk with him. And I'm not looking for that. What we need to be looking for is profiting that spiritual part first. And he says, all of these other things I'll give to you. If we will just follow him, that thy profiting may appear to all. Let that spiritual part be shining within you that others may be able to see and give God the glory, God the honor for what he has been able to do within you. Walk in that newness. And friends, if you haven't been made new, if your life has not changed, something's wrong. Take heed unto your, to thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. He says, take heed unto yourself, to thyself. And he was just, again, all he, what he's doing, it, he knew what the spirit was that was in this young man. He had walked with him. He had been with him. He says, now take heed to thyself and walk in that spirit. And set forth that right example. And he says, and, and unto the doctrine. He keeps bringing this up. And unto the doctrine. There is a special doctrine that he's talking about. That only the righteous will know of a truth. And there are many, many people, many different denominations across our land and across the world today. That has all kinds of things that they will teach. And some might line up somewhat with this work, but there's a lot of it that does not. And you better, what he's telling Pete, uh, Timothy here was be careful. And don't be taken away with those that he warned him about in the very beginning of this, of those that speaking lies, in hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, not even 
understanding, out teaching maybe things, religious stuff, but not even understanding that they are teaching lies because their conscience has been seared with that hot iron because they have gone so far away from it and they do not even understand the truth at all anymore. And that's where he said, Now you take heed, Timothy, to thyself, to the spirit that is within you that you have received and continue into that doctrine. Continue in them, he says. Don't go back. Don't accept these lies and these other things that he said. He says, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself. Isn't that something to think about? What he's saying now, if you do these things, continue in that spirit. Continue in that doctrine. Continue to grow. He says, if you do these things, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear ye thee. The work is just laid out so plain and simple of how that he has encouraged others and how he has warned people. And friends, don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him carry you away. It is a very careful thing. It's a sad time. Very sad. When we see the people that go away from the truth and accept something that is a counterfeit. Take it to the Lord and let Him be the one. I mean, put it into His hands. And if you see things that yes, it looks like it's more godly and people are walking in a more godly manner, that's where we need to be is seeking for that. But if you see things that people begin to walk in a more worldly manner, we better move. We better move away from it. And be careful or you can be drugged right into that with it. And this is what Paul was warning this young man about. And he was telling him to preach these things and to teach this to the brothers. This was about 2,000 years ago and there was things that was right there among the church and among the people where this young man was that Paul was warning him about. And he was telling him how to go out and to preach to others and to teach them. To be careful and to not be deceived and not be carried away with this. And he says, now you be a good example of that spirit that's within you. And you walk strong. Take heed. I want to read that last verse again. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. The doctrine of this book. The truths. Continue in them. Don't quit. He says, continue in them. For in doing this, in following my word, thou shalt both save thyself. That's encouraging to me, friends. Because I know that I have the opportunity to follow this. And I know that you have that opportunity to follow. Let it be encouraging to you. Let's move up and be strong. And not only for ourselves, but I want you to think, if your life, how you live in your life, the things that you say to someone else could save someone, 
think about what a glorious and, and wonderful feeling that, that would give to you. That because I am walking in accordance with the scriptures, I am living in accordance with what Paul was telling this young man to live. And I am able to communicate to someone else about the truths. And they're able to see and know it. And they're able to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and able then to walk in it. And I have helped them to become saved. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to think about? That that's happening in your life because you have accepted Christ and you're walking in it. And I want to be encouraged. I know I have seen people recently I know that are, are moving up, young and old, that want to move up. They have a more earnest desire to want to know about this. And I'm encouraged by it. Yes, I'm disappointed with people who I see, friends that might leave. But Christ said, when his, they said his work was hard. It was too hard for them to do. And that's all that if someone leaves, that's what's happening. It's a hard work and who can hear it? But when he looked at his disciples, his close friends, and he said, will you go away too? But Peter had the answer that we all, we all need to answer out. To whom shall we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And I know that... His words, the words of eternal life are being taught and preached to us here by Jesus Christ. It's His words. God the Father. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. And the younger men as brethren. Again, Paul just instructing this young man of how he should treat and how he should, should work with the other people. He says, the, the ones who are older than you, elders in the church, he says, entreat them as a father in the church, as one that can help you, one that will help you to grow spiritually, one that can give you fatherly advice. And the younger men, he says, look upon them as brothers. Brothers in Christ. And ready to walk and help in whatever way that we can. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn, first learn let them learn first to show pity at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Let us all, he says, work together. That's what he's saying, that's what he means. And the families, first of all, looking after whoever it might be, their widows in the family of that family or what. And we as a family of the church, we're at one. He's first of all, he says, entreat the elder people as fathers, the younger as brothers, the women as mothers, the younger sisters with all purity. Are we entreating each other is that way? Is our life living the example that others can treat us in that way, the righteous? And this is what he's wanting us to do. With all 
purity. Purity of mind. And all living. Keeping that garment white. Not letting it become soiled with sin. But walking in the newness of the spirit. Walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate. Trusteth in God. And continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. It says, now, I want to warn you about some conditions, he says, that you can see. And I would see we have the conditions throughout the world, and I hope they would not be here among us. But he says, she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God. And I believe he's talking about being desolate of things of this world, of the lust and the pleasures of this world. She's a widow indeed to the things of the world. But she puts her trust in God. And that's the key to it all. And continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. Is that upon our mind? Not just someone that is a widow naturally, but with all of us. But then he says, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. There may be some that might then go away and take that freedom of not having a husband of that way and living in sin. Living in the pleasures of this world. And I want us to think about that a little bit. About the, the spiritual part of that. Are we truly a widow to the things of this world? Have we truly let that die out of our life? Or are we maybe saying that that is the case, but then living after the things of the world, living in pleasure as he says here, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Dead spiritually while she lives that natural life. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. He says, now go out and to teach these. Give these things to the people. And charge them that this is how that they need to live their life. And we can't hold on to others and you cannot be at one with Satan and one with God. It will not work. We better be careful how that we communicate and how we associate with things that God would not want us to be, be involved in. We better be careful in that. Our actions, our deeds, just our acknowledging of being somewhere can be acknowledging someone in sin. Be careful. Go back there to what, how he told him to live. An example of a believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And that's what we're talking about here. How our life, if we aren't careful, we can be encouraging someone in something wrong. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. And is worse than an infidel. Providing things naturally. He says if we don't do that. 
But then I want us to stop and let's just think about that also, the spiritual part. He said, if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. Do you think that he's talking about all that naturally there when he says he denied the faith? If any man provide not for his own, and I think, yeah, that's part of that is part of us living in the, in the responsibilities that we have is providing for our own people, and especially for those in his own house, providing them and helping them in the natural thing to fast what needs to be done. But he says he's denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel would be one, an unbeliever the way I look at that. And if we do not provide the spiritual guidance for those in our, of our own, those that we are close to, those that are around us, and especially, he says, in our own house. If we are not providing that spiritual knowledge and that spiritual food to them, he says, you're worse than an infidel, one that doesn't even know anything about the truth. He says, you know it, but you aren't providing that for others. Do you understand what he's talking about? Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man. Well reported of for good works. If she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed saints' feet, if she have re relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work, He says, this is what you need to be looking for. And there was, a, there was things there that Paul was warning this young man, but he was telling him of the certain conditions that they needed to help. But he says, now you be careful. He says, but the younger widows refuse. Pretty strong language there. But what he was telling him, he says, don't you be involved in encouraging people in wrong. He says, now the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. I want you to think about that spiritually, friends. Now listen to what he's saying. He says, but the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Now let's just take that in contents like this, that all of us, spiritually, you may have been young. He says, now look at that older person that's come here and they've worked and they've done things for many years and they've worked. He says, that's who you need to be looking for, how they have followed the Christ. And that's the example you need to be looking at. But he says, now there's other younger ones. But he says, now be careful. Now that's not to say that they're all that way at all, but he says, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, for they have begun then to look to the worldly things of the lust of this flesh, instead of looking to Christ, they will marry. What will they marry? They marry the things of the world. Now let's not just I'm not just talking about young widows. I'm talking about us all, whoever we might be. He says, be careful. He says then, after a while they may start to letting the things of the world come back into that spiritual part and wax cold against Christ. And then having damnation because they've cast off their first faith. Isn't that something to think about? And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. And look around. See what takes place in people's lives when they, they go away from the truth. 
wandering from one thing to the other. We've seen that in our lives before. And not only idle, but tatters, telling things and about the truth and about God's work that's not true. Speaking things that they ought not. Let's don't be a part of that. Let's be strong. He says, I therefore, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Just tell me, first of all, this is what God set up, how he set up. For man to live and the woman to live. He told us again over there a while ago that he says there's some that is commanding to abstain from marriage and not be involved in that. And there's religions today that preach that, that in certain areas of that, if you're going to be an officer or a preacher or certain people there in that that the women can't marry and the men can't marry. And you can go back and see all manner of issues that that's created in that religion because of that. Because they have not been true to those things. God created man and he created woman. And he created a desire for them to be with, with together. And he says, I will therefore that the young women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary, none occasion to Satan to speak reproachfully. And that's to speak reproachfully against the word of God, against the gospel, against his work here upon the earth. <clears throat> I will therefore, I read that, I'm sorry, for some are already turned aside after Satan. That's a, that is a very sad thing to think about. But it was happening in that day. Paul was warning him about it. And it's happened in our day all the way I, as long as I can remember. Basically, those things have happened. Some have already turned aside after Satan. Let's don't let that be a part of us. But let's be strong in the spirit. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them. And let not the church be charged that it may receive them that are widows indeed. He's, again, he said, work is in your family, in your household, whatever it might be, to work in there naturally and spiritually. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And he's not talking about just putting people up upon a pedestal. But he's also, he's talking about there that friends, he says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Let them be the ones that you see and you have that respect in. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Paul was very strong in that. And he rebuked sin in wherever he saw it. And friends, how are we in that? Are we willing to accept the rebukes from God? This was a direct commandment from a servant of God here on the earth to a young brother, a young minister... And he was instructing him how 
that he should work with the people that he, where he was. Them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus and the elect angels that thou observe all that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. He says, Now I'm charging you that you do these things. You live in accordance with the way I have told you. And you rebuke, you chasten, whatever it might be, not in respect of someone else, but with all of them. That you observe these things without preferring, preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. And friends, the Lord has spoke very plain to us on many occasions. And I know that he continues these things. And just look around. We talk a lot about how we dress. We might come out here and dress in a decent order here as we come to church. But when we go out into the public places or go wherever it might be, are you dressing in the manner that the Lord, in that modest way that the Lord would have you? Or do you look just like the people of the world? When you see that these young women and young girls are coming out and they'll be out in public places and shorts on that, that are so short that it's embarrassing to see and it comes right here out of the people of this congregation, it's a shame, and it's believed that we are not listening to what the Lord says. And when we go out into that type thing, and the men and women, are we doing what He said for us to do here? Are we living in accordance and setting the example of a righteous believer? And He says, just live by what I'm saying. Are we living in that modest way? Am I dressing in that modest way? And parents, are we requiring these things, he says, in our homes of how that we should dress and how that we should go out, setting that example ourselves? This is the words of the Lord. This is not my words. I am just reading an extra exhorting on the things that he says. He says rebuke, sin. And if we are not following that doctrine, that is a sin. He goes over these things on and on and on to us. And we just act like we don't even hear it. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partakers of other men's sin. Keep thyself pure. He says, do not be partakers of other men's sins. And when we go out dressed and looking like the people of the world, and we don't have to go out all floosed up and everything, but just look in the mirror and let the Lord say, am I dressing in a modest way? Am I covering my body in the way that I should? And that's men and women, whatever it might be. Am I dressing in a, mod in a modest way? Or am I trying to show my body in a way that would not be pleasing? Am I painting that body up that it might get some attention from somebody? Neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. 
our sins, friends, will be made known. We might not think that people know and understand and see our sins. And they may not be, but he says they will follow you right up to where you stand before God the Father and His Son. If they're not made known here upon the earth, they will follow you right there before Jesus Christ. And would you want to stand before Jesus Christ dressed in the manner that some dress when they go out in public? Would you want to stand before Him in that way? Or do you want to be able to stand with Him in a modest way and Him look upon you in that manner? Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He says, if any man teach otherwise, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of word. Whereof cometh envy and strife and railings and even surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. He's telling him very plain and clear. He says if there's other teachings, people are teaching these other things and, you, and, and around you. He says that's nothing more but a false doctrine. He says it's proud, knowing nothing. And he says that's perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Being content with what God has given to us. Being content with following the word, being content and accepting whatever he says for us to do. Yes, I will comply. I will comply immediately. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare unto many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Do you want to be drowned? Nobody wants to be drowned naturally. That would be a terrible death. But what happens? They take in so much water. It pushes all. There's no oxygen left in that body and it dies. And that's what he's talking about all these other things here. That the riches of the things of this world and the temptations that we are rich in our own mind and we do not have to have the, the Word of God. We can live our life however we want to. He says they drown men in destruction and perdition in the wicked ways of God. That will drown us spiritually. It will take on so much of the things of this world that it will push out that spirit and drown it. For the love of, of money is the root of all evil. For while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith 
and pierced them through with many sorrows. The love of that, having that love for that money and the things of this world more than the things above. He says, which some have coveted after. That's what they're seeking. That's what they're looking for. Have erred from the faith. They've gone away from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. But thou, O man of God, can that be said to us this morning? Are we a part of that? But thou, O man of God, flee these things, he says, these worldly things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight that good fight of faith. That good fight of faith. And lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickened all things before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Christ Jesus there, he says, first of all, I charge thee in the sight of God who quickeneth all things, who, gave, who brought life to all men before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, now listen, all these things that I have told you in this letter, he says that thou keep this commandment without spot. Believe in it and working in it. Unrebukable. He says these are the truths. Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which in his times he shall show who is that blessed and only potent. The King of kings and Lord of lords. And He is the King of kings. And He's the Lord of lords over each and every one of us. If we have His Spirit. He is our King. He is our Lord. Who only hath immortality. Dwelling in the light. Which no man can approach unto. Whom no man has seen nor can see. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now he says, now you charge them that are rich in the things of this world even. Here is this young man, but he says, now you go to them. You charge them not to be high-minded. And that's with every one of us, friends, not to have that high mind. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Trust in those temporal things that we talked about in the very beginning. He says don't trust in that. But in the living God. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Richly that spirit of the Holy Ghost. That we might enjoy that peace. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Rich in good works. Do we have to have those good works? Yes, by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Not your works, but he says be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, laying up that spiritual foundation, building upon that solid rock. Against the time to come when the trials and temptations come upon you. That they may lay hold on eternal life. That's what we've been talking about all day here. The things there. Do you want eternal life? 
I believe that question was asked in the beginning. Do you want eternal life? Are you willing to put it in? Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some, having erred concerning the faith, grace be with thee. Amen. which some having profession have erred, professing things, but gone away. But he says, oh, Timothy, and I'd say, oh, friends, all of you that's here today, keep that which is committed to thy trust, to your trust, that spirit of the Holy Ghost, avoiding profane and vain babblings, avoiding Satan, avoiding unrighteousness and oppositions of science, oppositions of the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. He said, avoid those things. But he says in that 19th verse, lay up in store. And I'm going to say for yourselves, a good foundation against the time to come that you may have eternal life. The servants of the Lord have always been very bold, have always preached and taught his word, encouraged others in it. And I know that Timothy had to follow what he was instructed to do by his elder brother here if he was going to walk in the newness of the Spirit, if he was going to walk and to do with Jesus Christ, if he was going to be the minister, as he said, as Paul was having him to become and he was working, Timothy had to listen to these things. He had to adhere to it. He could not refuse it. And friends, I know today that if we walk close to the Lord, if we're going to walk with Him, if we're going to have that eternal life, we've got to walk in accordance to the words that have been read and taught and discoursed on with us today. If we're going to have that eternal life, if we're going to believe that Jesus Christ came here to be our Savior, And that we're going to stand before him, blameless. We've got to live in accordance with what's been laid out here today. We can take it or we can leave it. The people there, they could take it or leave it. He said, some have gone away. And he said that others there had erred concerning the faith but I know and I believe that there's people today that's ready to move up that are walking close and they're ready to listen to what the Lord would have for us to do let us go on in one place he says the axe is laid at the root of the trees. And I know that that is there today. Will we be able to be pruned and to give forth more fruit? Or will we be hewn down and cast into the fire? We'll sing number...
307. Amazing grace. And I just think about the amazing grace that we have been taught today. Of what that amazing grace will do for us all. And there may be someone that might would like to make a commitment and you can do so as we sing number 307 by coming forward. <coughs> I believe that the amazing grace has been laid out for us. I hope and I beg that everyone understands and everybody wants to be a part of that. The Lord has been so good to me his word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be. 
as long as life endures. Keep that in our minds. And let's walk close to him. Let's encourage one another. And those that have not walked, those that have not accepted him, I beg you to be praying, to be asking, to be seeking. Your eternal life depends on it. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Help us to take your word at full strength. Help us to use it to grow strong. Help us to put our full faith and trust in you and not in man. And give us power over Satan. And help us to encourage one another and to realize that your words come from you, the words that we have heard today. And to help us all to accept it and to be a part of it. And to let that spirit then shine in us that others may be able to see and give you the honor and glory. Thank you for what you have done for us. And be with us in the upcoming days. And those that are struggling spiritually, Lord, I beg you to strengthen them. And we give you the honor and glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.